here we got the Hercules uh, HE64 die grinder from Harbor Freight. Uh, it came with this on it. I didn't show removing this because um, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to do this project or not. I was just playing around. I started recording once I knew that I had decided to make this a project. And that was at a point after I had already removed this. But it was just a couple of um, clips to, to get the shaft out and everything. Um, it had this plastic fan. But I, it doesn't need that. And it doesn't need that. Um, I just took the four screws off. There's some kind of weird coupler in there. If you if you take it apart, you'll see it's there's nothing too complicated about it. All right, so I got this nose piece of the uh, die grinder between centers. Uh, this is just held in the chuck. I turned it in place so I know that it's concentric. And we got that, and we're turning against the two bearings so that I know that the OD will be concentric all the way to the shaft. And that's almost touching the chuck, but not quite. It's resting on the uh, on that center. And I got my cross slide adjusted to the taper of that piece, more or less. The piece is not exactly, this is a, just a rough casting. It hasn't had any machining done to the outside of it. Um, so we need to true it up and get a consistent taper on it. But I've just taken uh, readings from all sides and from different places on the casting and I think this is the taper that they were shooting for so I'm just going to clean that up all right I put this uh, C clamp on here just clamped to the jaw as a sort of drive dog I'm not too thrilled with the idea but I'm just going to be careful go slow and stay with That's as far as my compound travels. I got my carriage locked down. I'm going to have to loosen it up. Now we have a machine surface with a consistent, consistent, hopefully tapered. And I can work with that. All right, off camera, I parted off this piece of stainless. It's a threaded piece of something else, but I'm going to bore it out. I'm just going to go ahead and bore it straight until the, the nose of this thing will go in. I'm just going to keep doing this for a while off camera. 
All right, uh, I got this board to where this just starts to fit into it. So now I need to reestablish my taper. And it's okay that I lost my taper because I had it set up for this side and I need it set up for this side. Uh, so I got this Rube Goldberg uh, apparatus of um, indicator stands going on. And I'm just gonna dial in that uh, taper. Alright, I think I got it lined up on the taper now. Pretty much zero difference until you get down to this part. Oh, well, you didn't, didn't do it that time. But there's a part here where I stopped and then I went on. And I was able to read that earlier. This is a 10 thousandths. Uh, dial indicator so that's about one and a half thou all right I got my part dialed in and uh, now we're gonna cut this taper Well, that's really hot so I'm gonna let it sit for a while and I'll come back to it later all right I finished uh, turning my taper in there it's a pretty good fit I got it stuck in there earlier like I got it stuck again definitely a high spot in there but I'm afraid to try and chase it because uh, this is a very narrow taper and if I take off too much I've already had to take about half an inch off of here because you go over just a couple thousands and then the part goes drastically deeper into the taper so I think I'm just going to uh, call that good I got a piece of this is linear guide rail uh, Thompson Thompson linear guide rail it's a hard metal um, but this is a piece that I parted off previously for a different project and I've already center drilled it so that'll give me a good reference to get this set on center
Let's go. Hold their lines to work. Welder set up and all right so this is some kind of super hard stainless this is some kind of super hard uh, steel I don't know what either of them actually are uh, I'm welding them together with 308 stainless I'm welding on a lathe wearing the wrong gloves I already know I'm gonna get chewed up in the comments I wish I could get all the way around this thing, but I can't. I just contaminated my tip. I want to do another pass here. All right, I'm going to let that cool and then I'll flip it. All right, this is uh, cool now. All right, it's all welded up. Doesn't look as bad as I thought. It's actually maybe worth uh, displaying. Yeah, no. Anyway, it'll go into the boring bar holder just like that. And uh, this this is uh, cool in a couple ways because number one, and most of these um, tool post grinder deals have a a regular tool holder like that that goes on and then you'll have something like this that I made and it'll have a piece of half inch square stock welded onto the side of it and then that'll go in, into your tool holder and that puts you now you know that far out of the center line of your tool from the tool post but this this gets me closer in to the to the tool post All the way up against it so that we don't have this the added distance of, of this thing in there and it allows me to fix that at an angle so let's say maybe i'm i want to make a um a high pitch worm gear or, or a threaded rod or something like that you know four tpi or or lower if you have your tool just parallel like this you're gonna run into clearance issues but if you can rotate the tool like that you can you can match the the pitch of the whatever you're cutting and uh, not have that issue so welding caused uh, some high spots on the inside of the bore here so what I'm doing is basically a process sort of like hand scraping uh, I don't have my Prussian blue I can't find it but uh, I just use a sharpie stick that in there you can see where it's uh, rubbing the piece. 
And if you look inside, you probably can't see that, but um, you can see a little black spot. It's usually over here where I welded, but I just take that over to the Dremel with a little grinding wheel, a very fine grinding wheel, and just lightly hit the black spots. And I'm chasing the black spots away a little bit at a time until this thing will seat in there good like it used to. It's almost there. There's just a tiny bit of a wiggle, but uh, we'll get it here in a second. So I originally intended this to be uh, something that you can slide the tool out of the um, the tapered holder there, but I don't intend to use this on anything except lathe ever. I have other die grinders for that. Um, so I just went ahead and pounded that in there real good and then drilled and tapped a quarter 20 inch screw just for good measure. Uh, so now I know this bar is on center with the tool and uh, it's not going anywhere. So that's the end of that. So this is really the use case for the articulating um, grinder. This is a uh, some kind of high tensile forged uh, railroad pin. I don't know what kind of steel it is, but it's um, it's really tough. This this part over here, uh, I took that off with the carbide, um, and it ruined a carbide insert just taking off that little trying to take off that flange. So the only way I can really cut that well is with grinding. And let's say I wanted to make a you know a long pitch like this this is a three start 3d printed um worm gear worm uh and that's actually the pitch that you see here is the pitch that i needed to make this but if i wanted to make this out of hardened steel i could do it with that but all i did here was make a slot straight in um so i would need to make a 20 degree cut into the slot that way and then another 20 degree cut in that way to make an actual tooth profile for this. Uh, if it was a different worm gear, it might be 14 and a half or something. Um, but this is a brand new cutting disc, and this is the disc that I used to make this cut. And uh, so that's that's how much it took off of the cutting disc. I'm going to get a little bit of 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 a little bit